Nowadays, if you see the cyber attacks, many of the cyber attacks incorporate the use of PowerShell. I mean, they use the PowerShell utility for most of its operation. Uh, operations like executing commands on the system and in interacting with the C2 to bring further payloads or to exfiltrate some data, they mainly depends on PowerShell process. So by realizing this action of threat actors or malware, the people in the defensive side came up with a decision and they implemented a stringent controls over their security solutions. So what they did, they decided to restrict the PowerShell utility and the processes related to it. So in order to counter this uh, defensive measure, threat actors came up with another idea. They used a method called no power shell or powerless shell. In this video, I'm going to explain about that method only. We are going to see how we can practically achieve this no power shell or powerless shell technique. When you are following this no power shell technique in order to execute the power shell commands, it won't create any process related to power shell and makes this no power shell method more stealthy. No power shell. In 2019, Red Cadary published a threat detection report stating that PowerShell is the most used technique for malicious activities. Therefore, organizations started to monitor or block the PowerShell.exe from being executed. As a result, adversaries find other ways to run PowerShell code without spawning it. Powerless shell. So that is what they call it as powerless shell. Since the PowerShell it become, I mean, the PowerShell becomes ubiquitous, being used by most of the malware activities. The, the recent, I mean, the, the security systems upgraded and they, they are making sure that the PowerShell.exe is not being called. If it is, if it is being called, then they are considering it as a suspicious activity. So they are, they are obviously blocking this PowerShell.exe executable. So in order to bypass this, they, they introduced a technique called powerless shell. It's a Python based tool actually that generates malicious code to run a target machine without showing an instance of the PowerShell process. Powerless shell relies on abusing the Microsoft build engine, MS build. If you have no idea what is MS build, let's move to the same LOLBAS project. If I search for MS build. I can see the executable. It is also a living of the land binary. And we are used this, I mean, we can use this living of the land binary to bypass the PowerShell.exe, a platform for building Windows applications to execute MS code. So if you have no idea what is uh, MS build, you can Google. MS Build, Microsoft Build Engine, better known as MS Build, is a free and open source build tool for managed code as well as native C++ code and was part of .NET Framework Visual Studio depends on MS Build but not the vice versa. So here is the brief definition for MS Build and moving back to the same section, a platform for building Windows applications and to execute the remote code. Now let's try to download and copy of the project from the GitHub repository. So here is the steps, how we can uh, spawn a specific executable without calling the PowerShell. So let's try to explore that. In order to work this, we need to spawn the attack box. Attack box is already provisioned by try hack me. So I'm simply going to paste the command that I copied here. So I'm just cloning the powerless shell repository from GitHub. Uh, I got that specific powerless shell project. So let's get in to that powerless shell. Yeah, here we are. And one of the project requirements is to get the PowerShell payloads to make suitable to work with MS build. So what we are going to do, we are going to uh, get the PowerShell payload but we are not going to use PowerShell executable directly to call that PowerShell payload. We are going to do something else. So let's stay tuned. Um, 
the MSF Venom. So first we are using the MSF Venom to de develop, to build the PowerShell payload. And in order to do that, I'm simply copying this command on this. And uh, let me try to Let me try to paste it here. And I need to mention the port. And the L host, the, the local host is 10.10.128.82. So that is what I'm going to mention here. And the L port, they already gave it as triple four three but I'm going to mention uh, 4444. That is the reason I'll reveal it, but this is the command to generate the PowerShell payload. It will eventually create a PowerShell script. Now I give enter, uh, now I give the enter, so it is uh, developing the PowerShell payload. Let's wait for a few seconds. Meanwhile, I'm going to the next one. Also, we need to run the Metasploit framework to listen and wait for the reverse shell. So they are just spawning they are just initiating the listener from the MSF console. So I am also going to do the same here. And here you can see they are listening on port 443, but we already modified the port to 4444. Now, now you can see the payload has been created. If I click LS, I can see the payload. LIV0FF.ps1. This is the payload we just created. And in the another terminal, I am just pasting the same yeah uh, the same command to enable the listener and here i am going to modify the l port to 4444 and the l host to my attacker box ip and the attacker box ip is nothing but 10.10.128.82 yeah uh, i'm just mentioning this clicking enter it will eventually create a listener And meanwhile, I'm just going down further. Now what we have to do, we already download the powerless shell script and it is having the powerless shell.py, a Python script. And we are going to call this Python script and we are going to mention the type as PowerShell and the source as that specific PowerShell payload. We are just bringing that PowerShell payload into this powerless shell Python script. And we are just going to create a file. We are just going to build a file with the extension CSPROG, P-R-O-G. So if I go this attack box, I can see the handler. Uh, the listener has been initiated. It is now listening. Now, I'm, again, I'm going to the specific powerless shell path and pasting the command that I copied. Uh, one moment, I haven't copied it. So here is the command, powerless shell dot py. Actually, it's a Python script. If you have a doubt, you can just refer that powerless shell script here. So here it is. All right, now I am pasting that specific command and let me see, do I need to modify anything? We already placed this leave zero ff.ps1. So I'm just referring the same here. It is not in the temp directory. It is in the same directory. So I'm removing the path details here. All right. And apart from this, rest of the stuffs are same. Uh, and the output file is live0ff.csproj. So I'm giving enter. Uh, the file has been created, live0ff.csproj. So that is the file we created. Uh, simple. So this is the final payload that we need to transfer to our victim machine. So in order to transfer that, I'm going to use the Python web server and hyphen m http dot server and the port is 8080. Now I initiated the Python server. So this is the machine IP. So let me try to test that specific web server. Http colon double slash 10 10 128.82 and the port is 8080. If I give this, yeah, here it is. I can see the list of uh, files 
that is being hosted in this web server. Now I initiated this web, web server from a different directory, but I should move to that powerless shell directory before initiating the web server. And I'm clearing this once again, initiating the web server. All right, now it is fine. I'm trying to reload the same thing here. I can see live0ff.cs project now it is being displayed. Now the same thing, I need to download the specific file from my victim machine. So my victim machine is the one who is going to download the file. Uh, one moment, actually I need to spawn i'm just opening the uh, specific link from the browser it will take few seconds however you can just do it like this uh, w get and the specific path and the file name to download It's taking a few seconds. Yeah, actually it is reachable now. Um, I reached the specific web server I initiated from the attack box. Now all I need to do is to download that specific csproj file. And this is the file. I'm just downloading it with simple click. I need to go to the downloads folder, cd downloads folder to witness that file. It's taking some time due to network latency. Okay, now the file has been downloaded. Let's witness that file in the download directory. Yeah, here it is. Now we downloaded the specific dot, I mean, dot csproj file. And let me try to open the uh, the content. I'm, I'm just curious to know what is the content within this file. So I'm using sub, uh, I'm, I'm not having the sublime text here. So going to the file explorer and open the file. Now, I cannot open. There is no specific application to read this file. Uh, however, I can read the content of the file on my attack box. So let's try to do that. Here is the file. I am having sublime text. I can open this file with sublime text itself. Yeah, here is the content. Look at the content here. There is a byte array and some obfuscated strings. Okay, so here is the uh, content of the specific csproj file. Um, I'm closing this, moving to the victim machine. Now I successfully brought that csproj file into the victim's machine. All I need to do is to trigger that file. In order to trigger that file, I need to call this msbuild.exe and I need to call the specific csproj file as an argument. So let's do that, uh, msbuild. I'm not sure whether I can directly call this file. However, I can call it through this specific path, Microsoft.NET Framework, Windows, Microsoft.NET Framework, version 
okay and finally ms build not not this one yeah ms build.exe and uh, we need to trigger that we need to call that specific csproj file now and the csproj file is present in the same directory so i am mentioning the name alone all right perfect now uh, i i am ready to trigger the payload that i transfer to the victims machine meanwhile i need to make sure my listener is already running so here is the listener i initiated a while ago it is still on waiting for the connection so let's try to click the enter so just now i click the enter i'm just waiting for the shell here build started so it is just started building the specific csproj file it will take few seconds i should be getting the shell here the metropreter shell here is the thing we we started getting the metropreter session yeah we successfully got it so let's try to get the get user id get uid here uh, it is live 0 ff hyphen pc thm so when i see the uh, the system name here i would be witnessing the same let me check it in the command prompt yeah here is the name and uh, the user i can clearly say i mean i can clearly see i got the metropolitan session from my victims machine so what i need to do i need to look for the flags here and let's try to uh, read the question first replicate the steps on the no partial technique to receive the reverse shell on port 4444 once the connection is established a flag will be created automatically on the desktop what is the content of the flag so they already recommended to create the reverse shell on port 4444 because when i was creating it was initially showing port 4443 but i changed this port manually to 4444 in order to gain this specific flag present in the desktop so let's try to do that we need to gather the i mean we need to collect the flag from the desktop so let's try to open change desktop uh, and here i can see the file flag.txt so i'm just using the cat command against this flag.txt to read that specific flag so here we are successfully received the flag copying the flag and pasting it here we successfully accomplished this task as well yeah this is what i exactly wanted to convey i hope you really learned a new technique no power shell if you really did hit the like button consider subscribing my channel if you have any other opinion put it in the comment section i'll be reading those comments and responding to you you can also feel free to share this video among your friends i'll catch you next time with another exciting video until then i'm signing off cheers and uh, love you guys